Cinnamaldehyde is commonly found in cinnamon and is responsible for its characteristic flavor. In this video, we will be synthesizing it from non-related compounds. To do this, we will be using benzaldehyde, acetaldehyde and potassium hydroxide as a base catalyst. As a quick safety note, I've listed all H&Ps of the chemicals involved. We are dealing with highly caustic chemicals to suspected carcinogenics. So we have proper safety equipment and do this reaction outside or on a fumet. For the synthesis, 1.2 moles of benzaldehyde as well as 1 mole of acetaldehyde is used. The acetaldehyde is mixed with water to create a 30% solution by weight. Also some potassium hydroxide is dissolved in water and added as a catalyst. All of the benzaldehyde is added to a two-necked round bottom flask with a condenser on top. You can see that my benzaldehyde is already contaminated with benzoic acid due to oxidation. Next, 0.1 mole of potassium hydroxide are dissolved in a minimum amount of water and is added to the flask. Also I've added a stirrer. Then the acetaldehyde solution is added to an addition funnel. Finally, I've turned on the stirring and started dripping in the acetaldehyde solution. So the reaction going on is called an aldol reaction. So the aldol reaction is a pretty useful reaction in organic chemistry for creating new carbon-carbon bonds, starting from ketones or aldehydes. In general, there are two major steps. First, the addition of the carbonyl, forming the beta hydroxy form. This is also the special intermediate where the reaction is named after. Second step is the condensation of the beta hydroxy form. To catalyze the reaction, either a base or an acid can be used. The reaction mechanism, however, differs. For the sake of the video, I will only cover the base catalyzed one. So, aldehydes and ketones both own a carbonyl group, which is an oxygen double bonder to carbon. This creates an electrophilic center where electrons are pulled to. The hydrogen atoms on the alpha carbon are therefore slightly more acidic than others. A strong base like hydroxide ion can therefore remove one of the hydrogens forming the carbon anion intermediate. The electron is again rearranged forming the reactive enolate ion. Next, the nucleophilic enolate attacks the carbonyl of the other aldehyde, forming the intermediate alkoxide. The nucleophilic alkoxide then deprotonates water, reforming the hydroxide ion and the famous beta hydroxy form, which you can see in the bottom left corner. Theoretically, the reaction could be stopped at this point by using, for example, low temperatures. However, isolating the product is often reported with low yields and difficult processes. Because I don't want to isolate the beta hydroxy form, we'll be performing a deprotonation with water. So in the next step, a second hydroxide ion attacks another acetic hydrogen, forming a second enolate ion. The electron is again rearranged in multiple steps before finally leaving with the hydroxide ion. This creates a new carbon-carbon double bond and also recreates the catalyst. So theoretically there are multiple products which can be formed in the aldol reaction. If you use for example acetone and 3-pentanone, you will get up to four different beta hydroxy ketones. This works because every molecule can act as a nucleophilic and can react accordingly. In our case, however, only acetaldehyde can act as a nucleophilic, because benzaldehyde does not own an acidic alpha carbon. Also, to restrict the aldo reaction of acetaldehyde with its own, we are dripping it into an excess of benzaldehyde. So, structurally, there are only two isomers that could form. It could be either the cis cinnamaldehyde or trans cinnamaldehyde. Because the cis isomer is directly not as viable as the trans form, the trans cinnamaldehyde is preferred, which is exactly what we want. After finishing the reaction, the whole content is then transferred to a beaker. I've quickly checked the pH and added an according amount acetic acid. 
After the layers have separated, the aqueous layer was discarded. To purify the cinnamaldehyde, a distillation is then set up. Because cinnamaldehyde has such a high boiling point, I can only boil off the low boiling stuff and not cinnamaldehyde on its own. So we're definitely not getting the highest purity, which is okay for my purpose. At the end I was left with about 35 grams of decently pure cinnamaldehyde. The footage which you are seeing is actually not the pure stuff. The final yield is about 26%, which is quite okay considering that I've only used non-freshly distilled benzaldehyde, no nitrogen atmosphere and quite old acetaldehyde.